Hey everyone, you're with Tesla Tom, and thanks so much for joining me on my YouTube channel where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles, and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel, hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button, that way you stay informed of any new content, and it also helps my channel to grow as well. Today we're going to look at our latest power bill for our household here in Sydney, Australia with our solar panels and 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2. We're going to do that and much more right after this. Alright guys, so if you've been following me for a while, you'll know that I have a family of four. We live in Sydney, Australia. We've got a pool that runs about three hours per day at this time of year since the spring equinox in September. We have an 8.4 kilowatt solar system with a mix of string and micro inverters across two of our three phases. We also have a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2 since 2016, which backs up on one of the three phases. We also have two electric cars, a Tesla Model S and also a Tesla Model 3. Okay, so this is our power bill. We're with AGL, as you can see, one of the power companies here in New South Wales. As we scroll down to this box here, how much energy are you using? This bill is from the 6th of August 2020 to the 3rd of November 2020, a 90-day cycle. That's kind of the springtime here in Sydney where the weather is warming up and there's less reliance on uh, heating here overnight. How does my bill compare with the other homes in my area? As you can see in this 90 day period, we've used 601 kilowatt hours from the grid, which is less than half of a one person household in my area and certainly a lot less, less than a third than a two person household. Keeping in mind, we have a four person household, two adults and two children here in this house. And looking at the snapshot here, the average daily cost of this bill was 95 cents per day. And the average daily use was 6.68 kilowatt hours. Same time last year was 6.72 kilowatt hours. So a little bit less than last year, which is good to see. And having a look at the bill here, it's uh, $85.92 worth of new charges. And if we pay on time, we uh, get a significant discount and drops it down to $60.05. And this graph is also quite nice here, as you can see uh, over the last 12 months, the most of the usage in our household tends to occur in the colder months of the year in, here in Sydney between May and September, as you can see there. And that obviously correlates with the price that we pay as well. All right, so let's have a look at the second page of our bill. And uh, as you can see here, the name of my plan is called the electric car plan. We generally pay $1 per day to charge as much as we want for uh, both our electric cars. Now there's something odd about this bill, which I'll talk about in a second, but let's keep going. And these are the different meters here for our household. There are currently two meters that the power bill picks up. That meter there is for the controlled load, which is a special type of meter uh, for hot water generally in, uh, in New South Wales. We don't use any of that currently because I've actually switched my hot water, which is a heat pump system, over to the main uh, meter and that way it's covered by the solar panels and because we run it during the uh, daylight hours it's essentially uh, free hot water well I guess the opportunity cost is the feed-in tariff we could have sold that uh, solar energy back to the grid uh, but we essentially have the hot water covered by solar panels um, in basic terms and this meter here 2035 is for the main household usage and we have a time of use tariff which means that we pay a different rate of electricity depending on the time of day that we use so these numbers here correlate to uh, the charges down here as you can see and we'll go through that in a second and uh, this part of the bill tells you uh, that we paid the bill on time last time as you can see uh, it's a substantial saving if you pay on time with AGL uh, $60 off the last power bill so looking at the electricity usage itself, um, as you can see now, we did use 15 uh, kilowatt hours of peak electricity and peak for us is between 2 and 8 p.m. on a weekday, excluding public holidays. And uh, obviously it's a very high price, 53.9 cents, and we paid $8.24 in those 90 days. Now, 15 kilowatt hours over a 90 day period is not much at all. In fact, that's probably just quick maths. That's about maybe one sixth of a kilowatt hour per day. So not much at all, which is uh, which is why I don't mind paying that high price because the majority, if we do use any grid, is off peak, which is, I think, yes, there we go. It's 15 cents or 14.95 cents per kilowatt hour. 
And uh, a lot of this usage actually happened, I would say, in the early uh, parts of this spill cycle. And I'll show you with the AGL app um, that most of it was during the colder uh, weeks of this 90 day period. Uh, we used 448 kilowatt hours in off peak and we paid $67.06. And off peak is between 10 p.m. at night and 7 a.m. in the morning every day of the week. And uh, shoulder is the next category, and that's essentially everything that is not off peak or peak. Um, and we used 137 kilowatt hours, paying a price of 22.95 cents and uh, overall $31.62. That controlled load, like I said, is the generally used for hot water. We've taken the hot water system off that uh, meter, and now it's on the main meter. Uh, with the solar covering that during the day and the supply charge is 96 cents per day that these are all pre-gst prices and here in australia we pay 10 percent gst so a large component of our power bill these days is from the supply charge you could argue that you know with solar with batteries you could take yourself off the grid but i don't think we're quite ready for that yet with just the one power or two especially in winter when we do dip into the grid quite a bit so looking at the grid usage itself $193.32 in those 90 days and our feed-in tariff is relatively low at 9.5 cents we exported 1,333.99 kilowatt hours and this is the electricity that the solar panels generated that wasn't charging the battery wasn't used by the home this is all excess going back to our community going back to the grid and we got $126.73 credit and um that equates uh once you take away the solar from the bill sixty six dollars and fifty nine cents plus gst is uh obviously just on this component doesn't take into account the credit from the solar eighty five dollars ninety two cents we pay on time we get a credit of twenty three dollars and fifty two cents so overall sixty dollars and five cents if i pay on time now this bill to me seems a little bit cheaper than usual and i'll go through my previous bill from 12 months ago and this is because this time around, AGL didn't charge us the electric car charge of $1 per day, which is a bit unusual, and I'm being very transparent about it, um, and I'm sure AGL will rectify this in our next bill and probably uh, tack on the, the charge that was supposed to be on this bill onto the next bill, and that's fine. Uh, so normally, we'd have to pay another $90 um, uh, for, the, for the electric car charge, so it would be probably more like $150 uh, thereabouts. So we'll have a look at what our charge was last year, what our bill was last year, and make a comparison from there. Okay, so now I want to talk about um, our bills from the last 12 months. This is what I like to do, just give you a rolling uh, 12 months from the last four power bills, last four quarters, to give you an idea of what it's like to live with solar and, and, and uh, a battery in a four-person household here in Sydney. So starting off with summer which is generally the best time of year to have renewables obviously with lots of sun uh, from november 2019 to february 2020 25 dollars and three cents not too bad autumn the next season after that 104 dollars and 84 cents and winter is generally where we pay the most back to the power company 358 dollars and 85 cents between may and august this year and then uh, back into spring again where there's less usage during the night 60 dollars and five cents $548.77 for a rolling tally of uh, 12 months uh, previous to this state. Now, as I said before, the electric car plan um, was not charged this time around. Again, I'm being transparent about it, um, not, not hiding anything. And as you can see, last time around, between August and November 2019, 12 months ago, I paid $129.53, whereas this time around, it was only $60.05. If you add on the $90 I should have paid for the dollar a day uh, electric car plan, then yes, it's probably more comparable if I were to pay $150 this time. So it'll be interesting to see what my next bill will look like. And obviously stay tuned, subscribe, and you'll have a look at that in uh, in three months' time to see what uh, whether AGL have put on the extra charge for what they missed this time around. Okay, guys, before I go, I want to show you two more things. The first one is the AGL app, which is actually quite useful. Um, especially if you've got solar, as you can see from this graphic here, uh, this current bill, which is not the one I went through, but this current cycle now, after this last bill I just showed you, it tells you how much solar I've exported back to the grid compared to what I've imported from the grid, and also shows you exactly how much I'm about to pay day by day. And this is AGL's app, so I know this is accurate. As you can see, as we're heading into the warmer months of the year, uh, we're exporting far more solar uh, now than we are using from the grid, which is really good to see. And uh, if I were to scroll backwards in time, um, that previous bill I just talked about here in this video, you can see there as the weather got warmer from the bottom up, 
um, I used a lot, lot less from the grid. So that blue on the right is starting to uh, diminish a lot more. There were a couple of cold days there in between until the 3rd of November, but on the whole, there was a lot more solar going back to the grid, which is uh, which is good, obviously. And then you scroll back some more in time, and there is that, that winter bill, which I always uh, focus on, because obviously we use a lot more heating uh, in the nighttime to help with the kids um, to keep them warm at night. And you can see that there's a lot more usage from the grid, a lot more blue on the right compared to how much solar is exported. And obviously, whatever solar we get in winter, obviously there's less sun, we use that to charge the battery more. Um, and that's probably one limitation of renewables uh, for, for my household, for my situation anyway, where with one battery with an 8.4 kilowatt system, it's just not quite keeping pace with a winter usage for us. Um, and then we scroll back to uh, autumn, which is uh, you know obviously another good time of year because uh, there's no heating, no cooling. It's just a nice, pleasant, moderate climate here in Sydney. And again, a lot more export to the grid with the yellow on the left, and then uh, not much usage on the right. As you can see, towards the tail end of that build, then they're starting to, we're starting to use more electricity uh, for heating at night as well. And then summer, which is the last cycle in this graphic here, a lot more yellow on the left. Plenty of export, plenty of sunshine in summer, and uh, you know barely anything on the right-hand side where the blue is, uh, because obviously you know weather's good, batteries charge, lots of solar, and uh, no heating required, and not much cooling either. Uh, we get quite a nice ventilation in our house with uh, with good windows. And the last thing I want to show you is the Tesla app itself, and this is a nice graphic to show you how self-sufficient our household really was um, month to month. So this is November itself so we're almost at the end of November today is the 23rd and so far in the month of November we've been 97 percent self-powered uh, majority of that is powered by solar and then some with the power to at night time when the battery kicks in and we've managed to uh, produce you know more than double the amount of solar that we need for our household with the rest going back to the community and then back in October um, similar story 93 percent self-powered um, same story a lot more from solar than Powerwall and again, almost double the amount of energy that we produce from the solar panels to power our household. And then back to September when it was a bit colder, 85%, which is still not too bad for the end of winter, start of spring, um, and 162% energy offset. So you know, still more solar produced than we needed. And then back in August, which is traditionally the coldest month for us uh, in our household, still 61% um, self-sufficient uh, for solar and, and battery and sort of neck and neck between uh, how much solar is produced and how much a household actually needs. So uh, I, I quite like this part of the Tesla app. It gives you a good snapshot of uh, what to expect and um, you know, how well your battery and your uh, solar panels are performing. All right, guys, well, that is our power bill for our household for the months of August to November. That's kind of, again, the spring time here in Sydney when the weather is getting warmer, less reliant on heating, more sun coming out. And uh, that gives you an idea if you're thinking of buying a power to and adding solar to your home, what to expect um, in terms of energy usage from the grid uh, once you take into account solar and a battery for your household, for an average household like mine, four person household here in Sydney. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Hope you liked that video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Really appreciate that. And of course, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already yet. And uh, how was your latest power bill? Did you do as well as you thought? Did you do better? Did you do worse? Are you going to add more solar? Are you going to add a battery? Uh, leave your thoughts below. I'd really love to hear from you. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Stay safe. And as always, happy charging.